Hey everyone, welcome back to CSS3 in 30 days, or code 30 things in 30 days with CSS3, whatever you want to call it. Uh, today, we're going to be playing with the CSS clip path property, which uh, allows us to make custom shapes uh, from an image. So we'll put a, an HTML image in our markup, and then you can clip a path around a shape to create circles, polygons, triangles, custom shapes. It's pretty cool. And plus I'm going to show you a, a neat online free tool that lets you kind of draw your own shape and then copy the CSS. I mean, that's cool. So head over here into my screen and this is what we're going to be doing here. So day three as clipping images, the course files as usual in every module, there's going to be a dedicated lesson there that's going to allow you to download the course files for each day. So today is three clipping images. You're going to get index, final and sandbox.css. Of course, the sandbox is where we're going to add our CSS uh, and final is where you can reference the final CSS for your own reference and for help. And the index is just the markup that's already pre-coded. You're always welcome to play around with it and do whatever you want with it. But here's what we're going to do. So over here in my browser, day three clipping images with shapes. We're going to use CSS3 to clip the following images with different shapes. So I just have different images, stock images that I pulled from Unsplash that are just four random images at 300 by 300 pixels. Now here is the final result. The first one is a circle. Second one is a cool chat bubble. The third one is an X and number four is a right pointing arrow. And the cool thing here is these are actual images that they're kind of masked. Now they're not necessarily masked because that's a separate thing, but clipped images is the property that we're going to be using. And so if I just drag on this image, it's actually the original square image, but it's clipped with this, this circle. And this one is the chat, the chat bubble. Uh, and this is the X right facing arrow. So it's using exclusively CSS to get this effect. We don't have to use Photoshop. So this is pretty cool. And it's actually quite easy to, to do and understand. So let's head over into our code editor and into sandbox.css. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to select this first image, example number one. So that image, the class is, we have it set up here. It's simply clip image one, clip image one. And all we need to do is use a simple property called clip dash path. And then we're going to add the values, but I also want to be just a little bit more uh, safe here and do the prefix for WebKit. So let's start with WebKit clip path and then we'll work our way down. So we're going to start with just a circle. So here's the value that you add circle and then parentheses. And in there, it's going to accept some values. So for a circle, this is what we write. And then let's play around with it so you can see how it works. So 50% at 50%, 50%, save that. Now, if I go over here to the browser, you could see it made the circle where we did it. Now, what happens when we change those values? What do these mean? So if I were to go like over here in the code editor, 10% at 50%, 50%, that image, that clip is much smaller. So technically the smaller that first value, the smaller the size of the clip for the circle. What if I were to do 100% in the code editor here? Let's see what happens. Nothing. So perhaps that size is just too large and 50% is the maximum. So if I were to do like 60%, perhaps you wouldn't even see it. So that 60% is still being grabbed around the corner. So you can, you know, kind of create this weird effect, but 50% effectively is going to make it all the way around within the constraints of the square image. Now you can play around with that to see what different effects you can get. Now at 50 and 50, let's see what happens when I change this first value to 10% and 50. Head back to the browser here. You can see this is the offset, kind of the, the offset of where the circle clip is going to be positioned. So 10%, it looks like it's about 10% to the left. So maybe what if I were to do zero? Let's just see what that does. It goes straight down the center of the circle. Now, if I were to do 0% on the other value, it pushes that up. So it's going to the center. So this is coming from the center is what I'm gathering from experimenting with this. So zero and zero is the center axis of the circle and it's positioned at the top left. So it's taking the circle. Here's the circle. Here we go. 
and it's going from the center. And if I were to go zero, zero, it's going up into the top left, for you maybe it's up here, of that square. So the zero and zero axes of the square, is going, it's going up here. So we're only seeing a quadrant of the circle. Now if you play around with that some more, you can see the different results that you get. You can position that circle. But 50 and 50 is what gets you that circle clipped perfectly over that image. So that is the first one right there. Now I'm going to add clip path as well to be browser compliant. Circle 50% at 50%, 50%. Save that. Now, let me show you a cool trick. If you head to your browser and go to bennettfeely.com slash clippy, he has this really awesome CSS clip path maker that lets you create clip paths and there's demos and there's examples and you just copy the CSS down here. What's cool about this is one, if you just wanted to quickly create a shape without trying to figure it out yourself, you could do it here by using the presets like uh, triangles, parallelograms, rhombus, and so on. Or you can custom polygon and create your own. So let me ju let's just play around with a couple here and, and do that. So I'm gonna show you up here in our final example. Number two is this chat message box. So let's go down to Clip Path Maker and find that message box because I got it from here. So down here, message, if I click on this, it gives me the clip path down here that I could just copy paste onto the next clip path uh, image that we have in our in our CSS and then we'd be done with it. But let's just see how it's how it is uh, made. So you can see here it has all these corners and this is how it's creating the shape of the of the actual message box. Maybe let's choose a more simple one just so you can get the idea here. Triangle. There's only three values. And we could see it down here, 50% and zero. What happens if I drag this first value over to the far left, top left, zero and zero? What's the value? It's zero and zero. Even if I just moved it a little bit, 1% and zero. So clearly this top one, this top value is the X axis. So I'm 31% over. 63% over, 100% over. So that's how you position that first item, that first point on the clip. And then if I were to go down, you could see the Y axis changes. So that's how that first point works. And you can see here, point number two was this one. If I drag it anywhere, you could see zero and zero is top left, 50 and zero is top right. Oh, sorry, 100 and zero, I looked at that wrong. And anywhere else in the container, you can see the values change. So the triangle, we're going down to the bottom left at 100%. So zero on the x-axis, 100% on the y-axis. And then over here, we have 100 and 100 because we're at the far bottom right, which is 100% down in the, uh, over in the x-axis, 100% down on the y-axis. So you get a triangle. And so now if I go back to the message, I get a number of different values and you could just easily see where they're positioned and how that works. So that's pretty cool. So let's copy that and see what happens. I'm going to copy that CSS, go back to our sandbox and I'm going to select clip dash path dash two and just paste those values. Now save it and let's see what happens. Oh, sorry. Clip, clip image, clip image two. There we go. Now go to your browser. There we go. Now you can see here in our first example, we used circle. And in our second example, we used polygon. Circle has a different set of values. So as we played around with just a couple minutes ago and polygon goes based on however many numeric values you have. You have X and Y separated by comma. And the more separated by comma values you have, the more points in your, your polygon you have. And you can create totally custom shapes. So let's call that clip image number two. And we copied and pasted it there. Let's go around and play with this next one, example number three. So this is an X. So let's go to clip image, don't make the mistake again, three. And let's start out with our clip path, clip dash path, and it's a polygon. So we're gonna do polygon. And this is how I like to do it, uh, to write them up. It's just a little bit easier to read. So polygon in the parentheses, semicolon, and then write your first value. I'm gonna hit a 
return and then tab myself in a little bit here. Just easier to read this. So I'm going to start with 20% over and zero on the y axis. So a little bit over, not down. Comma, return. Let's go 0%, and the next value will be 20%. Now, if I were to stop there, let's see what happens. Let's see what that looks like. It might be kind of weird, or you might not even see anything. Okay, so you don't see anything yet. So let's add a little bit more and see what we can come up with. The next one is 30% and 50%. Now, I'm not just pulling these numbers out of my butt here. Uh, this was uh, practiced and played around with before using the clip path maker and everything like that. So, so to create something from scratch, you'd have to kind of map it out or use the clip path maker, but I want to show you how it works in practice. So let's add another couple values here and see what we create. Next, we're going to go zero on the X and 80% on the Y. Now let's stop there and let's see if anything's been created yet. So nothing yet. Uh, it's possible that maybe I'm typing something incorrectly. Okay, so the issue here why I don't see it is because uh, the clip path property isn't rendering properly in my browser, my Atom built-in browser. So that's why we must be using the WebKit clip path prefix. At least for me, I need to use that. So I'm going to be using that to start with. So WebKit clip path with our values. Let's see what we've got so far. There we go. So you can see it's creating value one, two, three, four. There we go. So cool. Let's keep going. So we've, now the next one is going to be 20% and 100%. The next one will be 50% on the X, 70% on the Y, 80% on the X is the next set of values, and 100% on the Y. Save that. Let's see what we're coming up with. Let's see if this is taking shape. You can see that it's actually starting to take shape. So here in the values, we've got 20% and 0, 0 and 20, 30 and 50. 0 and 80, 20 and 100, 50 and 70, 80 and 100. So we just have a few more to create the rest of this shape. So let's go back to our code editor. Uh, we got 100% and then 80. And then we got 70% and 50%, 100% and 20%. Save it. Check it out again. I just like seeing this progress. So you, got, you can see we just have a little bit more to do. We just have to, a few more points. Back to our code editor. We got 80% and 20%, and then we have 50% and 30%. So you can see these kind of start to mirror, mirror things a little bit. So 20 and 100, we have 120, 0 and 80, 80, eh, well, a little bit different. So some of these values are inverse. Some of them aren't. So save that. It should be our X. Let's go back over to example number three. No, not quite. So I did mess something up here. So go back to the code editor. Uh, yes, right here. So it's 80 and 0% and then 50 and 30. Go back over here. There we go. So I was right initially in my code editor. So it's you can see how these are actually mirrored. So 50, 30, 80, 0, 120. We got 0, let me see. So 30, 50, 0, 80, 20, 80, uh, 100. So these are kind of mirrored opposites. So that is the WebKit clip path. Copy that, paste it below, and change the property simply to clip path as the fallback. That'll do the trick. Save that, and there's your clip path image three. Now, finally, the last one we have is the right facing arrow. Now, feel free to try creating it yourself, or you can go to the clip path maker and draw your own version. Or, you know, if you really wanted to, you could just click the right arrow, it'll give you the values like this and you can copy and paste it or you can play around with this drag it around you know create a custom shape like so you know i just created this like funky looking arrow something like that something a little bit funky copy that head back over to your sandbox and i'm going to say clip image four paste that in there save check it out in the final result and we got my cool custom weird looking arrow there. Now, what you can also do is head over to the clip, clip path maker and click on custom polygon. And then just click to add some points. You know, I'm just gonna go like this. And then you can click on the, in the checkbox in the top left here on your first point and drag them around to create a totally custom polygon shape that you can use 
in your, here we go, I kind of have like this hourglass sideways Stanley cup, you know, and then there's your values. And then feel free to just try coding them out yourself. So those are the four examples. We got our circle, then different sets of polygons, heavily using the Bennett Feely Clippy Pathmaker, which is really cool. Thanks, Bennett Feely. Check, check his site out, follow him on Twitter, do all the things. Um, because he's made a really great tool that makes our lives easier as web designers and web developers. And those are your examples. Feel free to play around with them, make custom shapes, and use them in your own projects. Thanks for watching day three, clipping images with shapes in CSS3 in 30 days. Cheers.